Hello learners, this is Easy Engineering. Today we're going to talk about another fun topic in physics. Have you ever been on a sky diver ride in an amusement park? The ones where you sit on a swing and spin you around? If you have had that nauseating experience, then you know that the simple spinning on a circle can be very intense. This type of motion experience on a sky diver ride is called as uniform circular motion. It is what occurs when anything moves along a circular path in a consistent way. If we want to study the motion of the planets, as well as a wide variety of earthbound objects, learning this type of motion is very important. Here are a few terms that we'll encounter later. For a better understanding of our topic, let us first define these terms. First, we have the word force. Force is just a push or pull of objects. Next is accelerate. It means to speed up. Then we have velocity. It is the speed of something in a given direction. Next is tangent. It is a straight line that touches but not intersecting a point at a curb. But before we dig deeper to the definition of our topic today, let us clear our minds about the common misconceptions of a circular motion. People often talk about centrifugal force, the kind of force that pushes things outward as they move in a circle. But this kind of force does not exist. Always remember that things accelerate inward as they move in a circle. This kind of force is known as centripetal force. Okay, to explain how things really accelerate when moving in circles, let's take this as an example. Suppose you have a rope and a ball hanging off the end of it, you spin it around your head. So how would you describe this kind of motion? Well, first of all, it is moving around a circle. But in any particular time, the actual ball is moving in a velocity that is a tangent to that circle. Suppose this arrow represents the velocity of the ball. You can see that the velocity at this point is always tangent to that circle. Now if the ball continues to turn, then you can see that the velocity changes as a result. As you know, a velocity is a vector quantity which means that it has a size and a direction. In this example, assume that the ball is spinning at a constant rate. We also know that the size of the ball is also constant, but since the direction is constantly changing, then we can say that the velocity is also changing. So what does this mean? Well, if a velocity is changing with respect to time, we say that it is accelerating. And the only reason for something to accelerate if, is if there is some sort of force acting on it. Now, what is that force? In this case, the force that is causing the object to continually change direction is the force that the person is applying through the string. We call this force the centripetal force. Let's say we have a force represented by this arrow. The force is pointing towards the center of the circle. Remember that the centripetal force always points to the center, okay? So as we rotate it around, you can see that the velocity is constantly changing and so is the force. Take note that I am not referring to the strength of the force but rather its direction. As long as the force exerts itself, the velocity continues to change its direction. Another critical thing to consider is the angle between the velocity vector and the force vector. The angle should always be 90 degrees. Now, the ball is tied to a string, right? This string is a representation of the radius of the circle. All these factors give you the definition of something undergoing circular motion. And that is, an object is moving at a certain velocity and expressing a force that is always at right angles to the direction of the velocity that is why the object is moving in a circle. Given all of this, the velocity, the force, the radius, and the mass of the ball, we can form a formula. The formula is written like this. Centripetal force is equal to the mass multiplied by the velocity squared over the radius. Since we know that force is equal to mass times acceleration, then we can conclude that the centripetal acceleration is equal to velocity squared over radius. This means that if we want to increase the centripetal acceleration, we need to increase the velocity. 
So if you spin the object faster around your head, you're going to have to apply a greater force. Here is a quick trivia. Didn't you know that an amusement park is also a huge physics classroom? You heard it right. All of the rides in an amusement park are built with the laws of physics and is playing with these laws that make this ride so fun and intense. Okay, going back again to the topic. Let's talk about the other factors in a uniform circular motion. These other factors are what we call period, frequency, and angular frequency. When an object with constant acceleration is moving around a circle, it will take a certain amount of time to return to its starting point. The starting point that I am referring to is just some point along the circular path. We call the certain amount of time as the period of the motion, and we use the variable t to represent it. The unit for the period of time is seconds. But how do we know how many times the object passes through the starting point at a given time? Well, this is where frequency comes into place. Frequency of the motion is the number of rotations in some unit of time. We write as the variable f to represent it and the unit for frequency is hertz. Usually, we encounter the term angular frequency in uniform circular motion problems. Angular frequency is the rotation rate measured in radians. It is represented by a Greek alphabet called omega and the unit for angular frequency is radians per second. These three quantities are related. You see, angular frequency is equal to 2 pi times 1 over the period. But since frequency is equal to 1 over the period, then we can say that the angular frequency is equal to 2 pi times the frequency. So that's all of it. Did you enjoy our topic for today? I hope you certainly did. See you again next time for more interesting and fun topics only here in Easy Engineering. We'll make engineering topics easy and fun for you.